Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my most worn fragrances of 2022. So I do this video every year. I've done it in 2020 and 2021. And I remember last year filming this video and just feeling so, so excited because I was nearly at a thousand subscribers. And now look, I'm nearly at 3000 subscribers, which is just insane. And I just really like to thank you all for watching my videos and for giving me just so much support. I just really appreciate it. And I love every moment of being on YouTube and just being so privileged to have chat to you all and to, to know what you think of my videos as well. So thank you so much for all the love on the perfume science videos. I just really appreciate it. And I'm really sorry I didn't wish you a happy Christmas, but I was just really, really ill before Christmas. So that's why my videos just kind of suddenly stopped rather than coming to a conclusion for the year. So um, back in 2021, I actually recorded every single fragrance I wore each day in a notebook. And in 2022, I moved on to an electronic spreadsheet. So yeah, this is probably the truest representation of a most worn fragrance video that you're going to see on YouTube. And actually, having said that, there is a bit of a caveat to this video because I'm not going to talk about any fragrance that I've used up because actually in 2022, I used up 25 bottles of fragrance. So I've already talked about these fragrances in empties videos, so I'm not gonna talk about them again, but if it, it does happen to be something I've emptied in that particular month, I will tell you which fragrance it was, and then I will tell you my second most used fragrance for that month, for example. Now I've done that in an extremely scientific manner and um, yeah, told you exactly how we're gonna run this video, then we can get on with it. So if this kind of content interests you then please do consider subscribing if you haven't done already and also please like this video if you do end up liking this video. So what was I wearing in January? So back in January I ended up picking up a fragrance that I'd seen Adriana DC talk about and I remember watching her video and being kind of stunned by it really because she kept saying that this fragrance reminded her of me and actually she ended up saying that she thought that I already owned this fragrance as well. And I just got super curious about it. You know, you just do to get curious, don't you? you? You want to try it. So I picked it up and actually I really, really do like this fragrance. She was right. So this is Nina Ricci's Richie Richie, which is a rhubarb and rose fragrance. So if you hate rhubarb in fragrances normally, if you find rhubarb a little bit too tart, try this one because actually the rhubarb in this fragrance is really nicely tempered by the other notes in this fragrance. So this one is actually discontinued, but I have still seen it around for sure secondhand. And I've even seen it on commercial sites as well. So I think you still can get this one. But this is a tart rhubarb fragrance in the beginning, but it's really tempered by a very sweet syrupy rose. There's also some really soapy white florals and then a beautiful woody patchouli in the base. If you really like patchouli fragrances, this is a really good one to go for because the woody patchouli is just so smooth in this fragrance. It's really, really good. It's not a huge projector, but it does last a long, long time. And it's something that I'd be very happy to wear on a night out or something. I equally happy to wear this one to work. It's really fun smelling, but it's very grown up as well. And I think that's just a really nice combination to have, isn't it, sometimes? You, you want to be fun, but you want to be grown up. The beautiful rhubarb and rose syrup fragrance that's just perfect for the winter time, absolutely perfect for January. So that's Richie Richie by Nina Richie. So back in February, I had been reaching for my vintage alien bottle because I'd finally got pipette long enough so I could actually get some fragrance out of here safely without the danger of spilling it. So this was really one of the ones that I was reaching for a lot in February. I was also testing a lot of Mancera fragrances and I made a video of Mancera fragrances. So I had to wear all those quite a lot of days to be able to test them for that video. But I was also reaching for this one. So this is Dolce Garden by Dolce & Gabbana. And this fragrance I've been wanting for ages. So this is quite a creamy tropical floral. And that, actually I wouldn't have thought that this would be one that I would be reaching for in cold weather, but it really was. And I think actually this fragrance is probably more suitable for cold weather because of that creaminess. It could just be too much in warmer weather. So this does have frangipani, it has a lang ylang, but really it starts with quite a sharp citrusy feeling to it. and. I think that's really the reason that I prefer it in the air than smelling it up close. It's something that I think performs better in the air. I'm not saying it's a bad fragrance. I'm just saying it's one of those that leaves that cocooning kind of feeling and actually is something that is quite a good projector. It's something that people will smell you. They'll think you smell delicious because it has that coconut. 
it has all of those beautiful florals it has that lovely almond body milk kind of feel it has vanilla and it also has that really creamy sandalwood in the dry down it's just a very creamy fragrance throughout really and yeah just like being on a tropical island it just gives you that holiday feeling even in cold weather so that's um dolce garden by dolce and gabbana so back in march i think the one that i was really reaching for most is one that i've used up and that's illicit flower by jimmy chu but really the other one that i was reaching for a lot was narciso poudre by narciso rodriguez so i really love this fragrance because it just feels like a hug it just feels like a really fluffy jumper it's very much like the color of this this fragrance bottle is how this fragrance smells it's like a fluffy pink jumper and it just has this sort of vintage makeup-y powdery smell to it it has jasmine it has rose it, it's kind of very old-fashioned in a way but also just very clean and powdery and just a very enveloping fragrance really quite strong does really project as well it's a really good one for work you smell very professional and clean and it just has that really nice signature Narciso musk as well that I really really enjoy but I know that a lot of people don't enjoy um I have picked up now the ombre version of this fragrance the flank of, of this fragrance because I've heard that they're discontinuing a lot of this line and I think this one may be discontinued now I think I will try to find another bottle of this fragrance because I do really like it and I don't know how much is left because Narciso do this weird thing where they mirror the inside of their bottles so you can't really ever know how much is left but I feel like I've used this so much it must be nearly empty and it doesn't feel that heavy so yeah I probably will end up buying another one of these because if it's discontinued I'm going to be seriously upset so that's Narciso Poudre by Narciso Rodriguez so in April I had been stalking TK Maxx and I had found a couple of bargains and the one that I was reaching for most in April is one that really makes me think of Easter. It's just such an Easter appropriate fragrance and it's Heliotrope from the Le Nôte Gourmand line from Reminiscence and honestly this if there's something that's obsessed me this year it's this fragrance and this line. So the biggest thing about this is is the marzipan so there is a bit of freshness in the beginning with the, with a bit of a fig note but really the marzipan the almondy smooth cool marzipan in the dry down is is really the biggest thing in this fragrance and really what i really was craving back in april it just gives me those vibes of alice in wonderland and it just makes me think of easter it, this is really the fragrance that you need to wear on an easter egg hunt it just is that kind of feel to this fragrance it's a really strong one as well it really does project it's something that I really have fallen in love with and actually my love for this fragrance has made me buy something this is something I never ever do it's made me buy the whole line so it made me buy Grimov which is a fragrance that is a, like a marshmallowy kind of fragrance in the dry down but it, it does have like quite a, a weird opening in a way and then I also more recently bought Dregé, which is a, like, a, like a powdery almond, but with orange blossom kind of fragrance. And actually, I really like all three of these fragrances. I'd say these two are my, probably my favourite, and probably Grimov is probably the one that I, I struggle with a little bit in the opening, but I still do really enjoy in the dry down. So yeah, I, this is what's happened to me this year. I've, I've just fallen in love with the entire Reminiscence line and bought all of them. So these again have a little bit of a vintage vibe going on but they are really really gourmand too if you really like a very grown-up gourmand fragrance then do check this line out because i think you probably will find at least one love here so back in may i was reaching for a fragrance that i've been gifted by andreas here on youtube serves vibes and this is a fragrance that andreas had won in a competition but he couldn't get it shipped to where he lived so he gave it to me and I'm eternally grateful because it's something that on paper having seen the notes I probably would have dismissed I probably wouldn't have even thought to try it because I wouldn't have thought that I would enjoy it as enough to actually purchase a bottle but actually I really really like this one and it's something that I don't really have represented in the rest of my collection so I always find that interesting so this one is Good Solomon's Kadren and I think the thing I like about this is that it makes me think of 1950s fairgrounds. It makes me think of old-fashioned sweets, like 
rock and aniseed balls. It has that really sort of sweet but aromatic feel to it. So this has notes of ginger, cardamom and also spearmint, which I think is what makes me think of those old fashioned Swedes. But it also has a very fluffy jasmine feel, which is very comforting and in enveloping in a way. And it's something that I think could really be somebody's signature fragrance. It, it's, it's an all round kind of all year fragrance, this one. Because of those fresher notes, it works really well in the spring and even in the winter. I wore this one a couple of days, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Really, really enjoyed it in the cold weather as well as in the warmer weather in the spring. I think it's, you know, definitely something as well that I'm happy to share with my husband. I think he, he would smell amazing in this one if he would ever wear it, if I could ever persuade him into it. But yeah, this one, I, I've, it's been really a big surprise for this year. Something that I really didn't think that I would have liked as much as I do like. But yeah, it's Cadren by Good Solomon. So in June, I was wearing a fragrance that I really felt a bit funny about buying, actually. I don't really know what came over me. I, I think I thought it was a bit old fashioned and that I shouldn't buy it for some reason. But it's only a 90s fragrance. It's not that old. And really, does it matter? I don't I don't really know what was possessing me anyway. I ended up buying it in the end because I became obsessed with this fragrance. I would spray it every time I went into store. So this is Ceruti 1881. Um, and this fragrance came out, I think, in about 1995. And it really does make me think of that era. I think because of the peachy colour of this, this fragrance in the bottle and it makes me think a bit of the dresses they wear in Four Weddings and Funerals. I was watching that film the other day and I was thinking, I feel like a bridesmaid in Four Weddings and Funeral when I'm wearing this fragrance. It just has that sort of chintzy, flowery feel to it. So this one is a huge floral fug of, of loads of different floral notes. I'm not going to reel them all off because they're just our hundreds. But really the thing that I get from this fragrance is like a honeyed chamomile tea feel um, in the beginning. There's also a lot of mimosa in this fragrance, but I think the chamomile just edges the mimosa out slightly. There's also quite a lot of rose. Um, it's just a really kind of aquatic feeling floral fragrance to begin with, but then it turns more into more of like a hay-like floral towards the end. And it also is quite musky as well. This is just a really nostalgic feeling fragrance. It makes me just think of vintage dresses and I love vintage clothing generally. So I think that's really why I was so in love with this one over the summer. And actually I wore this again a couple of weeks ago. And I just fell straight back in love with it. I think this is going to be, again, one of my most worn fragrances in 2023. It's something that is just so incredibly cheap. I think I picked up this 50ml bottle for something like £15. I think that's ridiculous for how good this fragrance is. It's really long lasting as well. And it's really quite strong. You don't need many sprays for this one. So that's Ceruti 1881. So back in July, I had treated myself to a fragrance from Floris and I don't know there was something about the Floris brand that made me want to try a fragrance from them so I picked up a rose four and this is a technically a rose oud fragrance but you really you'd honestly never know so this is a very light fresh pink slightly spiced rose and it has a warm resinous feeling leathery patchouli to it it does have oud, but the oud is very background and it just gives that sort of opulent, smooth, uh, rich feel in the background of the fragrance. It's really not a very distinctive in your face kind of oud at all. I think when people think of rose oud, they think of things like oud bouquet and they think of things like shagaf oud. And this is really so, so far removed from that. It's really not as in your face and it's more of a, um, it just feels very something that's kind of gentlemanly in a way. I don't know whether that's just me thinking, projecting this brand image on how I perceive this fragrance. But yeah, I'd say like it, it just makes me think of, of someone very smartly dressed, basically. I think this one really surprised me as well because I actually enjoyed wearing this in the warmer weather. And, you know, to wear something that's technically a rose oud in August or July is not really something I'd expect to do, but I actually really did enjoy wearing this one in the warmer weather. It's something that isn't strong and that's its beauty. And 
I think this one just has that attractive quality to it that you don't need to overspray. It's not a strong fragrance. It's not meant to be a strong fragrance. This perfume actually makes me think a lot of um, rosé wine corks. It has that sort of dry fruitiness to it somehow, even though I'm not sure there is actual fruits in this fragrance. That dry fruity booziness that also has that slight woodiness to it, just like a wine soaked cork. Yeah, a rosé wine soaked cork is how I describe this fragrance. So yeah, I didn't wear this one actually loads and loads, but it was definitely my most warm fragrance in July because I was doing an awful lot of testing in July. And yeah, this is definitely the one that I came back to the most. So that's Floris, a rose for. So in August, I was just basically enjoying myself a lot. I had most of the month off work and I met up with a few people from Instagram and from YouTube and I had fun with them. And then I went on holiday, had more fun, came home, just, you know, had some relaxing time at home. Yeah, just had a great time in August, really. And really the fragrance that I was probably wearing the most was Alien Eau Extraordinaire EDT. But I finished this one, so I'm not going to discuss this one because I talked about it in my empties video. But really, that was probably my most warm fragrance in August. The one that I wore probably the second most was Miller Harris's Found at Dusk. So this is a fragrance that I bought again from TK Maxx back in springtime. And it's something that I had been reaching for a little bit in the springtime, but really I started reaching for it a lot during August. I think the thing about this fragrance that I really got addicted to was the feeling of nostalgia I got from it. So this fragrance really makes me think of my childhood garden. I grew up on a, on a farm and we always grew lots of, you know, kitchen vegetables in, in the garden. We also had blackcurrant bushes as well. And my dad had a greenhouse he, he built this greenhouse and he used to grow loads of moneymaker tomato plants in there. And we'd also have a, a grapevine growing in the greenhouse. So you, you just get loads of green, fruity smells with blackcurrant outside, blackcurrant bushes outside. And this fragrance really just embodies that sort of childhood smell of those, of those plants. And that feeling of that summer weather when it's just kind of been a really hot day and you know there's a storm coming. You know that the, the air is kind of pregnant with, with a thunderstorm. It's, it's also that feeling literally of the, the dusk. It's called found at dusk. And yeah, I would totally agree with that because it's got that kind of heavy feeling that you get when the dew is coming down, when it's been a really hot day that you get it at dusk in Britain. It, it's a very distinctive smell, that green sort of watery smell that you get at dusk it stays quite a fruity fragrance throughout so there's still that black currant note even in the far dry down there's also mint in this fragrance and mint is something that i don't really have a lot of in fragrances and here it's super green and aromatic and just really lends a freshness to the fragrance i think this fragrance is just absolutely gorgeous it's just got a um a really super green but super fruity feel to it and just it's incredibly natural smelling and has been one of my favourite fragrances this year. So that's Found at Dusk by Miller Harris. So September, sad times, I was back to work and really and truly the fragrance that I was wearing the most was Moschino's Toy 2 Bubblegum. But this is one I've used up, so I'm not going to talk about this one. But really the reason I was wearing this the most was because I got obsessed with the bubblegum with this fragrance. And I had to keep spraying it to actually get that bubblegum because it's quite short lived. So yeah, Toy 2 Bubblegum. But really the one that I was reaching for the second most and the one that I didn't end up using up was L'Ombre de Merveille by Hermes. And this is really the polar opposite to Toy 2 Bubblegum. If that is the, you know, the light, fruity, like fun one, this is the moody fragrance, I'd say. This one is a cool, spicy, ambery cola, a flat cola kind of fragrance. This makes me think of sort of 90s shoegazer indie music. You're the grumpy goth girl in the corner who's just put on her boyfriend's fragrance and is wearing a lumberjack shirt. It's something that isn't light in the slightest. It's very, very moody feeling. And I think that sort of suits that autumnal kind of freshness, doesn't it? It's sort of still got that slight warmth of the summer but really it's a much fresher fragrance 
This one is definitely a mood for me. This is something I don't always want to wear, something that I don't always want to reach for. It's very, very strong. A couple of sprays of this is more than enough for me. It can be quite dominating. It can be just too much. But it's something that I do enjoy if I'm in the mood for. And I was in the mood for this fragrance back in September. So that's L'Ombre de Merveille by Hermes. So in October, I was probably mostly reaching for fragrances that I've ended up finishing. So I, I remember finishing Gucci Rush in October. I also finished Wanted Girl and I also finished Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo. So those fragrances I clearly was reaching for quite a lot in October. But the one that I didn't end up finishing that I was also reaching for a lot was Floor Street's Elang Elang Espresso. So this fragrance is a beautiful, boozy feeling coffee fragrance in the beginning. It really smells like there might be whiskey or something in this fragrance. Really something that I really enjoy in the opening. As this dries down, you get the booziness fading and really it becomes replaced with a very sultry, trippy, hypnotic feeling in Lang Lang. It's something that I just didn't really expect from a dark fragrance of Lang Lang. Lang Lang to me is always quite a bright sunny note and it really isn't in this fragrance. It's quite, yeah, gothic feeling almost. Later on you get a dusky rose and then some light cocoa and even a light patchouli. I think the thing I like about this fragrance is that it's quite dark and moody and it really did feel appropriate for the time of year when I was wearing it around Halloween. I think this fragrance is something that needs a night out. I haven't worn it on a night out yet and I really do feel like it deserves a night out. I think this is an absolutely perfect fragrance for the winter time really shines in the cold weather. So that's um, Elang Elang Espresso by Floral Street. So in November, I was going back to a fragrance that I bought in the springtime and it's one that I'd kind of worn a few times and then I'd put it away and not really worn it again. And then I was doing my Halloween video and I rediscovered it really. It, it's something that I assigned to a junior vampire in that video. And really, I think that's very fitting for it because it is a very sort of just bitten kind of fragrance. So this one is Agent Provocateur's Fatal Entente. This is a really hard fragrance to describe because it does have a spiciness to it, but it is also super fruity, but in a very artificial, almost like a pick and mix sweet kind of way but it is just really addictive and something that I've really come back to. I sort of dismissed it to begin with, but yeah, it's got something addictive about it. Something that reminds me of strawberry laces. It makes me think of cherry chapsticks. It's, it's definitely got a, a very strong licorice note, but in a very fun way. It's something that's quite fruity licorice. I think people compare this one to Angel by, by Moogler. I really wouldn't compare the two at all. I don't think they're that similar at all. But I think maybe if you don't like Angel, then you might think that they do resemble each other. It's just really fun. That's just really the, the word to describe this fragrance. It's, it's fun. It's not a serious fragrance. It's not meant to be something that, you know, you're going to be smelling niche with. It's just a fun, fruity, cheap fragrance and perfect for a night out. It definitely is, you know, a fun, flirty night out kind of fragrance. That's Agent Provocateur Fatal Entente. So finally in December, I was reaching for a fragrance that I bought back in November and it's a fragrance that I didn't like when I first tried it. I remember when I first tried it, I just remember putting it on my to sell, resell pile because I just didn't enjoy it. There was something about it that was just off-putting to me. But actually when I went back just from sheer frustration, I realised that I was wrong and I did a complete 180. I actually really ended up loving this fragrance and I actually wore this to my work Christmas meal. So this is Chopard's Love which is a really deep dark vintage smelling kind of rose fragrance. It makes me think of black roses this fragrance and I think the thing I didn't like about it is that it's quite dry and quite spicy. It has this dry spicy feel. It's not really a sweet rose at all. There is a very slight honey note in the dry down but really it's it's not overall a sweet fragrance. There's also a very strong patchouli. If you're not a fan of patchouli, this is not the fragrance for you. And the patchouli here smells more like a black tea to me. It's something that's quite dark, but not really earthy, quite more of a woody kind of patchouli. I think really the most dominant rose note in this fragrance is something like a Bulgarian rose because it's 
very much got the feel of a rich rose oil. There's also a little bit of Thai rose that I can detect in this fragrance as well. It's got that almost like um, sparkliness that you get with Thai rose. I just think this fragrance is very elegant and it's something that is not very everyday for me. It feels quite dressy. It feels quite appropriate for Christmas, actually, this fragrance. It's quite opulent. So if you like a strong but not sweet rose, then you should maybe check out this one. It's a very long lasting fragrance. So that's Chopard's Love. So that was the final fragrance in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know what were your most warm fragrances of 2022 and have you tried any of my most warm fragrances? If so, do you like them? What do you think of them? I'd be really interested to know. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.